Hello and a warm welcome. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Shivika Sethi. I'm a national level faculty of microbiology. I'm also the author of the review book, Mastering Microbiology for All PG Entrants and Academics. Today, I'm going to be discussing the images of the eggs produced by trematodes or the flukes. Now, these helminths, which are the flukes, are broadly categorized into the following groups, liver, GI, lung flukes, and blood flukes. Amongst them, the liver, GI, and lung flukes, the adult worms produce operculated eggs. That is, there will be a lid-like structure from which will open, and from that, the mira cerium will emerge once the eggs have been passed out in the, from the patients, uh, from the host. The blood flukes, here the adult worms produce non-operculated eggs. So let's get going and see the eggs images. So let's start with the liver flukes. Liver flukes belong to the following genera and the species. That is Faciola hepatica, Faciola gigantica, Clonorchis sinensis, Opisthorchis viverenni and Opisthorchis felinius. So amongst them, Faciola species, that is Faciola hepatica and Faciola gigantica, the eggs which are passed out in the stool of the patient cannot be reliably distinguished from each other. They almost look the same. Slightly gigantica may be larger, but it is very, very difficult to say, okay, this is hepatica or gigantica. So this is the typical morphology. That's the operculum and these eggs are 140 to 180 microns long and the end which is the opposite end which is called as the ab opercular end sometimes under the microscope we can see that the surface at the ab opercular end is rough or irregular this can help us to differentiate the egg of Faciolopsis buski which is one of the GI flukes. Again, the eggs are passed out in the stool and they almost have the same size. But many times you really cannot appreciate the rough aspect. So it becomes very difficult to say this is Faciolopsis buski or Faciola hepatica or gigantica. So in such cases, if you get a question, it depends, your diagnosis will depend upon what is the patient manifesting with. Is he manifesting with symptoms of the biliary tract or is he manifesting with the symptoms of the GI tract, right? So, Faciola, Hepatica and Gigantica, big sized eggs, 140 to 180 microns in size, operculated, the ab opercular end is rough or irregular. The other three liver flukes, that is Clonorchis sinensis, Opisthorchis viverenni, Opisthorchis felinius, their eggs are relatively very small, almost one-fifth the size of the fasciola eggs. Very, very easy to tell us, okay, this is fasciola or it is either of these two, clonorchis or opisthorchis. Amongst, the, amongst them, they, it is very, very difficult to differentiate. They almost look the same. Now, look at this egg in detail carefully. You can see the operculum is placed on shoulders like we have our head placed on shoulders similarly the operculum is supported by visible shoulders and on the opposite end the ab opercular end there is a knob or a hook okay so what are we going to remember about liver flukes faciola hepatica and gigantica big sized eggs 140 to 180 microns operculated and the ab opercular end may be slightly rough. Clonorchis and Opisthorchis, small sized eggs, just 27 to 35 microns. They have, uh, the operculum has visible shoulders beneath it and the ab opercular end has a knob or a hook. Let's move on now to the GI flukes. GI flukes, we have Faciolopsis buski, Gastrodiscoides hominis, then we have Metagonimus and Heterophys. Now, amongst them, Faciolopsis buski, which is found in the upper small intestines, 
and that gastrodiscoides, which is the adult worms, are found in the colon. Hence, it is called as the colonic fluke. Obviously, where are the eggs going to be passed out? In the stool. So, these eggs are again very, very large in size, almost similar to fasciola hepatica, 130 to 150 microns. So, as I said, differentiation from fasciola becomes very, very difficult. But sometimes you can appreciate that here it is a smooth ab opercular end, whereas in case of fasciola species, it may be it is rough or irregular. But many a times under the microscope, it is very, very difficult to differentiate them. So as I said earlier, to arrive at what is the likely cause of these eggs in the stool, look for what is the site of the disease manifestation. Coming to the other two GI flukes which are found in the small intestines, that is Metagonimus yokogawai and Heterophyes heterophyes. The genus and the species are the same names. These produce very small eggs like Clonorchis, 26 microns to 28 microns in size. Now, I've placed the figure of the egg of Clonorchis or Opisthorchis right in front of you. You can easily compare. The operculum is not supported on shoulders and the opposite end, there is no hook or knob at the ab opercular end. Okay, so that does with our GI flukes. So what are we going to remember in the liver flukes? Two of them are producing big sized eggs, 140 to 180 microns, the fasciola species. The other two, Clonorchis and Opisthorchis, small sized eggs, just 27 to 35 microns. Amongst the GI flukes, Gastrodiscoides and Fasciolopsis, big sized eggs, whereas Metagonimus and Heterophyes producing small sized eggs. Okay, and we learned how to differentiate them from each other. All right, so let's move on now to the lung fluke. Lung fluke here that is Paragonimus vestimini or the oriental lung fluke. Where is the eggs going to be passed out? One in the sputum, and sometimes when the patient swallows the sputum, the eggs are also demonstrable in the stool of the patient. So these are the eggs of Paragonimus. Many a times it is slightly, this end, the opercular end is slightly flattened. Okay, but that is very difficult to appreciate many a times. Now look at the size of the eggs here, 80 to 120 microns. So somewhere it, in between the small sized eggs and the big sized eggs. Okay, so 180 to 120 microns. And the ab opercular end, can you appreciate, is thickened. Okay, so where are the eggs going to be passed out? In the sputum or sometimes also in the stool, right? So this finishes are those fluke eggs which are operculated. Okay, next we move on to the blood flukes. As we learned earlier, these produce non operculated eggs. So, blood flukes are schistosoma species. The schistosoma word is starting with an S. So, all these don't have operculum, but instead of that, they have S, something starting with S, that is spines. Okay, so all of them will have terminal spine, lateral spine, and so on. Okay, so blood flukes, most of them are found in the stool, mansonae, japonicum, intercalatum, mekongi, etc. So why are the eggs found in stool? Because all the adult worms of schistosomes are found in the mesenteric plexuses. Whereas one species of schistosoma, that is hematobium, this, the adult worms are found in the vesicle plexus. So obviously the eggs are be going to be demonstrable in the to, uh, in the urine of the patient, right? So let us start with hematobium first. So it is the eggs are present in urine, and schistosoma hematobium is primarily reported from Africa and Middle East. Okay, so if you get a question, that means in generally the, there will be a mention that the patient has recently traveled to Africa or to the Middle East, and in the urine you are seeing these typical eggs which are non-operculated, elongated, ellipsoidal, and 110 to 170 microns long. And what do they have? A terminal spine. 
so terminal spined ellipsoidal eggs 110 to 170 microns long in urine tells you this is schistosoma hematobium next we move on to those which are localizing in the mesenteric plexuses so all of the other eggs will be found in the stool of the patient let's come to schistosoma mansoni the most widespread species amongst all the schistosomes reported from africa several countries of middle east west indies that is the caribbean countries and several countries of south america now schistosoma mansoni eggs are almost similar in size to schistosoma hematobium again elongated ellipsoidal non operculated and what do they have a term rather la lateral spine okay so lateral spined eggs in stool just think of schistosoma mansoni next we move on to schistosoma japonicum the word japonicum is going to help us remember this is mainly reported from either the far eastern countries and the southeast asian countries now the name may be containing Jap japan but it is now almost eliminated from the country of japan so other otherwise far eastern countries and china vietnam philippines etc that is where it is reported okay so japonicum the eggs are again in stool and look at the eggs here they are rounded or subspherical or oval okay and these are 70 to 100 microns in size and they have a small spine in comparison to the spines of other two species that have we studied hematobium or japonicum relatively smaller spines okay so stool uh, is where the eggs are present are we okay let's move on let's come to the rarer species of schistosomes one is schistosoma mekongi it is only reported along the mekong river of, in southeast asia so it is mainly reported from people who are living or have traveled to cambodia or laos the eggs are found in stool and they are very very similar to eggs of japonicum rounded and or oval or subspherical and 50 to 80 microns in size so slightly on the smaller size and they have again a small spine okay so can you see that spine out there that is of uh, mekongi or japonicum they both look almost the same lastly we have two species only reported from central or west africa that is schistosoma intercalatum and guineensis the eggs are now elongated and they also have a terminal spine in just similar to schistosoma hematobium but here where are the eggs they are in the stool of the patient and if you look at this closely can you appreciate there is a central bulge equatorial bulge that is present the eggs of these two species okay they are also slightly longer than the eggs of schistosoma hematobium 140 to even up to 240 microns in size okay so let's quickly review the eggs of schistosomes eggs in urine eggs with terminal spine are found for schistosoma hematobium eggs in stool with terminal spine are seen with intercalatum and guineensis stool eggs with which are rounded rounded with small lateral spines these would be either of japonicum or mekongi right so this finishes our eggs of all the flukes let me finish our discussion on flukes by just reminding you that there are three flukes which are carcinogenic schistosoma hematobium is associated with squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder Clonorchis species and Opisthorchis viverenni, these are associated with cholangiocarcinoma. So that's all for today. Now, if you like this video, please do not forget to like the press the like button and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber.